Well, joining us right now is Denver City Councilwoman Stacy Gilmore. There's a lot of work to do in your district. Why is Denver just now getting around to this 20 year plan? Well, you know, we had to kind of get through our growing pains through the rest of the city. And four years ago when I came into office, we really asked and pushed the mayor and Brad Buchanan, who was our director of um, planning for the city, to make sure that we had a framework to guide the growth that we knew was coming. Okay, so this framework, it's, it's pretty broad. This is a diverse area. So mm -hmm. how do you take into account all of these ideas that we just heard for mm -hmm. those people who've lived there for a very long time to, to balance out with the new? Sure. We went out to the community. We went to neighborhoods. We invited them to large-scale public meetings. And then we seated a steering committee made up of 20 community leaders, both from the Montbello and then also Green Valley Ranch neighborhood, to make sure that monthly we were meeting to vet any of the plans that were coming through. And then also had five large-scale public meetings that we had over 100 community members with us at each one of those meetings and so really trying to hear that voice mm -hmm. and plenty of opportunities for neighborhoods and communities to weigh in. Okay so what what is on the list like what what is number one on the mm -hmm. list for example? Sure well walkability. Mm -hmm. We're a historic suburban neighborhood. Um, cars were the way that we had to get around and so we want to make sure that we're looking at growth in a way where we situate large workforce development centers, um, employment centers close to the neighborhood but also resources sources such as grocery stores and entertainment amenities so that we can get out of our cars and actually use multi-mobility or different transit options to get around. And you talked about jobs. Mm -hmm. You're close to DIA. Mm -hmm. that, that that seems like that would be a perfect fit. Is there some relationship then with DIA? We have talked with DIA um, as part of this entire planning mm -hmm. um, effort. And so the DIA neighborhood is part of this plan as well. And so we want to make sure that we're getting training opportunities to the neighborhood. And we've actually started talking about a large scale workforce development training center that might be situated along that tower corridor to make sure that we have resources close to home to encourage folks to look at careers not only at Denver International Airport but we also have Gaylord Resorts right next to us oh, as right, well. Right, right, that's right. Mm -hmm. uh, we heard that gentleman talk about the, the lack of grocery stores. Mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you do that? How do you fix that? How do you how do you bring in Sure. Um, shopping, yes. a, a shopping mall? Yes, yes. Well, um, I've been doing driving tours for developers and grocery stores. And so we have them meet us at my office at the front side of the community off of I-70 in Peoria. And then we'll get into my vehicle and I drive them through the whole neighborhood. And on May 8th, we had a wonderful announcement. Natural Grocers, um, they're coming into the neighborhood and they're going to put an anchor store at Green Valley Ranch Boulevard and Tower Road, but we also need to look at that front side of the Montbello community. And so we're working with community groups and the city and grocery stores to see what the options are for the Montbello community as well. But you really have to show people the area. And one of the comments I get most times after a driving tour is just, I never knew it looked yeah. like this. And we've got a lot of green fields, but we're a diverse suburban neighborhood and we're ready for those amenities. Because I, you would think that people would look at this as an untapped market. Market, mm -hmm. right where um, it's a growing neighborhood it's mm -hmm. diverse it's I mean there, there's so much going on in in Northeast Denver so it really takes literally dragging people through to see it? Mm -hmm. Well, we, we want them to see it. And, you know, if we have to drag or, or well, get them coffee might, or you however know, you know what we I mean. need yes. to, yeah. I mean, we want to show them the area and kind of dispel some of those maybe rumors or stereotypes that they might be operating from. And honestly, our residents are the most important folks in this whole equation. And this neighborhood plan gives them an idea and a framework for what developers may need to work within because this document will be one of the criteria that city council looks at for any rezonings in the city mm -hmm. and so this document is really the neighborhood's voice. Okay so setting timelines and when will these neighbors see a, mm -hmm. a well we know they'll get a new grocery store but sure. a shopping mall or, or the things that they want maybe new parks mm -hmm. and so forth. So there's been quite a few developers so this plan has taken 20 months mm -hmm. to you know from the inception to when city council voted on it 
it's been 20 months. And so we have had a lot of developers waiting to see the final outcome of this plan to make sure that their ideas and direction were in alignment with it. And so I predict within you know the next six months to 24 months, we're gonna see more movement uh, around growth in the neighborhood, but smart growth and making sure that we're including parks and open space and amenities in that growth as well. And affordable housing, I suspect, is part of that discussion? It most, it most definitely is. Um, along the Tower Corridor, we already have 252 units of affordable housing going up, two and three bedroom um, homes. But just earlier this week, we met with another developer that they're looking to put another 200 units in. And we're having those conversations with the city. So we want to make sure that the community can stay in the neighborhood sure. and navigate our rising property values yeah. with any sort of growth yeah. that is at the forefront we need to make sure that we're protecting our residents yeah, and you know that is important to them thank mm -hmm. you so much Stacy Gilmore for being here appreciate you uh, enlightening us thank on what you. is happening in Northeast Denver appreciate All right, we'll be right it. back thank you